Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Uh, I'm Angelina and I'm thrilled to have you here for another exciting code walkthrough. Today we're going to continue from last week and show you some code implementation and experiments with the Raptor method that we discussed last week. But first, if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Here we will show you algorithms, AI tech products, and break it down like I am five year old. Okay, so let's dive in. Hi, Mehdi. Hi, Angelina. How about let's use the Wikipedia paper from last time as an example in the code walkthrough? Sure, we can do that. Sounds good. Um, can you share a screen? All right. Okay. So we have already talked about this paper, Raptor, before. And we also have a video that you can leave the link uh, in the description. So we covered this paper here. Raptor recursive abstractive processing for tree organized retrieval. We explain how that works and we go over the algorithm. Today, I would like to go over some code and show exactly how that works. Um, so this is the Jupyter Notebook that is part of the GitHub repo. So this is the repo here. And if you want to run the code, there is a Jupyter Notebook called Demo where you can just go over. They have some example code where you can execute and see how the Raptor works. The idea here is we are going to see how Raptor in practice works. So to explain very briefly how that works, it's a technique that helps rag-based systems for better retrieval and better question answering. And when you have, for example, a PDF you're going to split the PDF into smaller chunks, and then you will go and cluster similar chunks into groups. And then you summarize the cluster, and then you will repeat that until there is no further clustering visible. So you have essentially a tree of nodes, and each node is like a summary of a cluster. And if you have this structure, this paper demonstrates that this is in practice works better than a lot of other rag based system, including the vanilla and other baselines. So today we are going to see how the Raptor in practice works. I will also show the structure, the tree and go over some code. So that's the goal here. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So as I mentioned before, you need to have an OpenAI key because the default Raptor is using OpenAI for summarization and for embedding. So this is a very nice paper again from Stanford. And what I want to do is to implement the Raptor on this paper, and then I can ask questions. So what I'm doing here, I am actually reading the PDF and then I will just extract the text from PDF. So this for loop here, it is going to go over each page of the PDF and then it will extract each page and concatenate um, all the text together. So I intentionally did this because I just wanted to do it for 10 pages of the paper, not the entire paper for this demo. And then here we are just importing some libraries from this Raptor. So retrieval augmentation, I imported that one. I created an object from that. And then this add documents, this function is going to essentially just go and do most of the heavy work for us. So when I pass the text to that, it's going to go and read the text, split the text into smaller chunks. You can change all of the default settings for the maximum number of tokens, the chunk size, like all of the configurations. But here I am not doing anything. I'm just sticking with the default configurations. So this log here shows all of the configurations for this Raptor. 
For now, I am just simply going with the default configuration. So this text, which is the 10 pages of that paper, is going to be split and to be chunked, to be clustered, to be summarized, embedded, and then added into the vector database. And the vector database, the default one that Raptor is using is that face, F-A-I-S-S -S from Facebook but you can also customize that if you want to. So what happened here, the log shows that it has created a tree which has three layers. So layer zero, layer one, and then layer two. So layer zero is actually the root nodes, the most general nodes. And then as we go further, it goes more specific. Then when you are done with this step, then the text has been already digested completely. So now you can ask your questions. Here, for instance, I have this question, what is store? If I run that, it is going to do the retrieval from the vector database. Again, very similar to basic RAG, but here we are using that hierarchical approach of the Raptor. And then it will uh, generate the response. You can see that this is the response. So if you want to really compare that, you can have uh, your own vanilla or other types of rag, and then you can compare the response and see which one is better or more accurate. But here I'm just simply showing how this Raptor works. What you can also do, you can save your index, your essentially the index that you have created and later on use it. So the good thing about Raptor is when you digest and consume the text, you can save that index and later on simply load it. So you don't need to do it every time. So here I am storing that index in this particular path. I loaded the, the index from that path just to show how that works. And then if I ask the question again here, you can see that it should return essentially a very similar response to the one that I just asked. So far, this part of the code, if I want to summarize that, we are simply just using the default Raptor, mm -hmm. which uses OpenAI for embedding and also OpenAI for summarization. What about clustering? It's also open AI for clustering, right? Clustering is, it's using this Gaussian mixture model. Oh, okay, okay. It's it's, yes, it's part of the Raptor implementation. What about if we want to use our own models for embedding and summarization? That's a very good question. They have some code in the repo explaining how that works. So if you want to have your custom model for summarization, for question answering, even for embedding, so you can use this sample code here. For example, I want to use Google Gamma 2 billion parameter for the summarization model. Simply, I just need to extend this base summarization model, and then I have to define my own summarize function, the logic here. So again, this is just a sample code that shows how that works. How did you pick the Google model? Why did you pick this one? I just wanted to test some example? open source model. Oh, okay. And Google Gamma actually is a very good model, although the number of parameters is 2 billion. In practice, it is very powerful. Got it. And because the number of parameters is 2 billion, it is very fast on CPU. That's why I chose this model here. But you essentially can use any, any open model. source model. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so this is the summarization model, the code for custom summarization. This is for question answering. Again, you just need to extend the base question answering model and then you implement your own logic and the same for embedding one. So I try to use the same code on CPU. It would take forever. So that's why I didn't go with this approach. I will explain what I did instead. 
here, when you define your own custom models for summarization, embedding, and question answering, then the rest is the same. You just need to initialize your Raptor model based on this configuration, and then you can ask your question. So what if I want to take a look at the structure of the tree and see the nodes? How can I do that? The library has some classes that you can use. So it's very straightforward. I created this tree object from this Raptor rag, and then uh, here, this code, for instance, it shows the nodes at the root level. The total number of nodes are 139. Then I added this function to print out every single node with the textual content of it at each level. So you can see the level zero, which is the root level. Then there are only one, two, three, four, and five nodes. Question. The, the root level is the highest level, which is pretty much the summary of the whole document, right? That's the yes. highest level. That's correct. Yes. So if you look at the, the textual content, you can see that they are uh, more or less similar. So they are essentially looking at the same thing, but from different angles. That's why there are four different nodes instead of having one. If they were like extremely similar, then we would have one cluster at the top, but here they are essentially in this group into one cluster. That's why there is no further clustering, but the actual text of each node is a little bit different, meaning that they have explained the same thing, which is the summary of the entire document, but from different angle, which is actually very good. So, um, in, to use, so in order to use that root node as a summarization of the whole document, uh, one way is potentially combining them because they're actually talking about the same thing. You can choose one of them or potentially concatenate them together since they're speaking from different angles, right? That's true. Yes, you can do different ways here. You can just simply just use one of them as the summary. But what I would do if I were to use that, I will essentially just use all four of them because they are just talking about the same thing from different angles. So there are some different things covered in each node. And then further down you go, more specific points about that paper and so on and so forth. So here you can see that these are essentially like all of the nodes of the graph with the text. And I created a, a visualization from that. So I can show you here this structure. So you can see it's like a hierarchy. So at this level, which is this layer two, these are the text chunks, the original text chunks from the document. And for example, here are these one, two, three, four, text chunks, they have been clustered into one. And then this one will be summarized and then embedded and then stored in the vector database. And you will repeat that for the rest of the nodes. So here you can see there are different nodes at different layers. And at the root, which is top here, we have you know, four or five different nodes. So this is the visualization of this entire tree for that particular PDF file. Yeah, this is much easier to look at than the, the text chunks of all the indexed text chunks. Yes, absolutely. So I wanted to use my own custom models <laughs> for summarization, for embedding, uh, and for question answering. However, I tried to use this open source model from Transformer Library and it would take forever. So instead, I used this uh, light LLM and uh, combination of that with Olama. So and I'm not what's going the reason? to explain. The reason is it's a lot faster. If you use Olama and load your open source model, it would be extremely fast compared to just simply use the transformer, use the open source models from the transformer library. And why is that? Because Olama, right, they are optimized version of these open source models that specifically on CPU work very well. So that's why I use this Olama and Light LLM to integrate the open right. source model. Right. It's optimized using uh, C++, right? It's not the 
the common one using Python type of. So yes, so they are yes. This Llama CPP that's the right. library that has been used for right. basically quantization of the open source models and this optimized version for CPU. Mm -hmm. um, so for my customization model, I am using this light LLM to call the Olama, the same model, Olama Gamma 2 billion um, for summarization. So the implementation is here for summarization model. And that's the same for question answering and for embedding. So if you use this approach, it would be extremely fast compared to use the open source models directly from Hugging Face. And again, when you define your own custom model, you just need to create a configuration and then just pass the configuration into your rag. Um, and the rest is the same. You can parse the text and kind of add the text to your rag and then just ask your questions. So the approach is going to be very similar to the basic Raptor, but here we are using our own custom models for different tasks. And this one worked. This one, the other one. And this one worked, yes. This one worked. I am not going to just add the text again here. Don't worry about it's it. It's been already added. But yes, if you execute this code here, then it will, yes, it will add the text. The thing is, it still takes more time than you use OpenAI because I have CPU and it's going to be CPU for embedding and for summarization, which is going to be much slower than calling some API from OpenAI. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. <laughs> um, that's all for the code. Uh, first of all, yes, it's a very good approach for RAG, but even if you don't want to use this Raptor necessarily for RAG, what you can do if you have a summarization task, you can summarize your document at different level, right? Which is pretty cool in my opinion when you are going to show the summary for the user, then you can have different levels at different granularity of summarization of the same document, which has a lot of use cases for an applications for people. Yeah, awesome. Okay, that's it for today. We'll see you next time.